In 1299, Osman I created the Ottoman state. By the course of more than a century, various campaigns had led to the creation of an empire with footholds in Anatolia and the Balkans. Worried by the fast expansion of the Muslim Turks, Pope Eugene IV called for a crusade army composed of troops from several countries, mostly Hungary, which had been recovering from a civil war. In the first phrase, the crusade was mostly victorious, but after a neglected peace treaty, a second attack was launched and a humiliation would await the belligerents. This crusade would be known as the final Christian attempt to seal the Ottoman expansion and the upcoming of Turkish supremacy over the Central Europe. In 1428, the Ottomans had gone to war with Venice and Hungary and achieved a temporary peace by establishing a buffer state known as the despot of Serbia. After the war ended in 1430, the Ottomans returned to their earlier objective of controlling all lands south of the Danube. In 1432, Sultan Murad II began raiding into Transylvania. After King Sigismund died in 1437, the attacks intensified, with the Ottomans occupying Borak in 1438 and Zvornik and Srebrenica in 1439. At the end of 1439, Smederevo capitulated and Murad succeeded in making Serbia an Ottoman province. Jurad Brankovic, despot of Serbia, fled to his estates in Hungary. In 1440, Murad besieged Hungary's main border fortress, Belgrade. After failing to take the fortress, he was forced to return to Anatolia to stop attacks by the Karamanids. Meanwhile, Sigismund's successor Albert had died in October 1439, shortly after signing a law to restore the ancient laws and customs of the realm. The law restricted the royal authority by requiring the participation of landed nobility in political decisions. Four months after Albert's death, his only son Ladislaus the Posthumous was born while Hungary was in the midst of a civil war over the next monarch. On July 17, 1440, Ladislaw, King of Poland, was crowned despite continuing disputes. John Hunyadi aided Ladislaw's cause by pacifying the eastern counties, gaining him the position of Nader of Transylvania and the corresponding responsibility of protecting Hungary's southern border. By the end of 1442, Ladislaw had secured his status in Hungary and rejected an Ottoman proposal of peace in exchange for Belgrade. The Catholic Church had long been advocating for a crusade against the Ottomans, and with the end of both the Hungarian Civil War and a nearly simultaneous one in Byzantium, they were able to begin negotiations and planning realistically. The impetus required to turn the plans into action was provided by Hunyadi between 1441 and 1442. In 1441, he defeated a raid led by Ashak Pasha of Smederevo. He nearly annihilated Mezid Bey's army in Transylvania on March 22, 1442, and in September he defeated the revenge attack of Shahabad in Pasha, Governor General of Rumelia. Brankovic, hoping to liberate Serbia, also lent his support after Novo Biadio, the last major Serbian city, fell to the Ottomans in 1441. On 1st of January, the Pope published a crusading bull. In early May, it was reported that the Turks were in a bad state and that it would be easy to expel them from Europe. War was proclaimed against Sultan Murad II at the Diet of Buddha on Palm Sunday one week before the Easter. An army of 40,000 men, mostly Hungarians, the young monarch with Hunyadi under him, crossed the Danube in mid-October. The Crusaders, led by Wladyslaw, Hunyadi and Brankovic expected that Murad would not be able to quickly mobilize his army, which consisted mainly on fief-holding cavalrymen to Marriott's who needed to collect the harvest to pay taxes. Hunyadi's experience of winter campaigns from 1441 to 1442 added to the better Hungarian advantage, they also had better armor, often rendering the Ottoman weapons useless. Murad could not rely on the loyalty of his troops from Rumelia and had difficulties countering Hungarian tactics. In early November, the Crusaders captured Nish after a victorious battle against the forces under Qasim Pasha of Rumelia and his CO commander Turahan Bey. Sources justify that the lack of Ottoman cooperation between Ottoman commanders led to their defeat. The Ottoman army was forced to withdraw and burn villages in their path in an attempt to wear down the Crusaders with the scorched earth tactic. 
When they arrived in Sofia, they advised the Sultan to burn the city and retreat to the mountain passes beyond, where the Ottoman smaller army would not be such a disadvantage. Shortly after the Crusaders conquered Sofia, bitter cold set in and the snowflakes fell. The Crusaders encountered a massed Ottoman army at Zlatitsar Pass. Until then, there was no major Ottoman resistance, and they were well positioned in a defensive position, which was also favoured by the cold temperature. The Crusaders wanted to continue their advance towards Adrianople through the forests of Srednagora. When they reached Sladitsar, they were stopped because the pass was blocked by the very strong Ottoman army. It was very hard to acquire supplies for the Crusaders and they were forced to retreat after an Ottoman counter-attack and got defeated. As they marched home, however, they ambushed and defeated a pursuing force in the Battle of Kunovica in early January, when Mahmud Bey, Sultan's son-in-law, was captured. Four days after the battle, the Christian army reached Prokipuc. Brankovic proposed the army to remain in Serbian fortified towns during the winter and continue the campaign in the spring. They rejected the proposal and by the end of January reached Belgrade and in February Buda, where they were greeted as heroes. While the Battle of Zlatitsar was a defeat the overall campaign had been seen as a Christian victory. The king and church were anxious to maintain this impression and gave instruction to spread word of the victories for the propaganda, but contradicted those who mentioned the loss. Murad returned, angry and dejected by the unreliability of his forces, and imprisoned Turahan after blaming him for the army's setbacks and Mahmud Bey's capture. Murad is believed to have had the greatest wish for peace. Among other things, his sister begged him to obtain her husband Mahmud's release, and his wife Mara, daughter of Jurad Brankovic, added additional pressure. On March 6, 1444, Mara sent an envoy to Brankovic. Their discussion started the peace negotiations with the Ottoman Empire. On April 24, 1444, Vladislaw sent a letter to Murad, stating that his ambassador, Stoker Jastanik, was traveling to Eden with full powers to negotiate on his behalf. He asked that, once an agreement was reached, Murad send his own ambassadors with the treaty and his sworn oath to Hungary, at which point Vladislaw could also swear. That same day, Vladislaw held a diet at Buda, where he swore before Cardinal Julian Cesarini to lead a new expedition against the Ottomans in the summer. The strongest remaining supporter of Ladislaus the posthumous claim for the throne also agreed to a truce, thus removing the danger of another civil war. Between June and August 1444, negotiations for a treaty were carried out, first in Eden and then in Sejd. The Crusaders were not entirely interested in peace, however, especially with Cesarini pushing for the Crusades' continuation. The Cardinal eventually found a solution that would allow for both the continuation of fighting and the ratification of the treaty, and on August 15, 1444, the Peace of Seget was sworn into effect. Shortly after all the short-term requirements of the treaty were fulfilled, the Hungarians and their allies resumed the crusade. The mixed papal army was composed mainly of Hungarian, Polish, Bohemian whose combined armies numbered 16,000 and Wallachian for thousand forces, with smaller detachments of papal troops. Teutonic Knights, Czechs, Bosnians, Croats, Bulgarians, Lithuanians, and Ruthenians. Troops from Croatia and Bosnia were led by Croatian nobleman Franco Talavac. Papal, Venetian, and Burgundian ships under Alvise Loredan had blockaded the Dardanelles as the Hungarian army was to advance on Varna, while a second flotilla comprising six ships, two Burgundian, two Ragusan, and two Byzantine, blockaded the Bosphorus. Both failed, and the main Ottoman force from Asia, including the Sultan, crossed the Bosphorus on October 18, 1444. The Hungarian advance was rapid, Ottoman fortresses were bypassed, while local Bulgarians from Vidin, Oryovo, and Nicopolis joined the army. Frusian, son of Ivan Shishman, also participated in the campaign with his own guard. On October 10, near Nicopolis, some 7,000 Wallachian cavalrymen under Makir II, one of Vlad Dracul's sons, also joined. Armenian refugees in the Kingdom of Hungary also took part in the wars of their new country against the Ottomans as early as the Battle of Varna in 1444, when some Armenians were seen amongst the Christian forces. 
Late on November 9, a large Ottoman army of around 60,000 men approached Varna from the west. At a supreme military council called by Hunyadi during the night, the papal legate, Cardinal Julian Cesarini, insisted on a quick withdrawal. However, the Christians were caught between the Black Sea, Lake Varna, the steep wooded slopes of the Franga Plateau and the enemy. Cesarini then proposed a defense using the Wagenburg of the Hussites until the arrival of the Christian fleet. The Hungarian magnates and the Croatian and Czech commanders backed him, but the young 20-year-old Wladyslaw and Hunyadi rejected the defensive tactics. Hunyadi declared, To escape is impossible, to surrender is unthinkable. Let us fight with bravery and honor our arms. Wladyslaw accepted this position and gave him the command. Andreas del Palacio states that Hunyadi commanded the Wallachian army, indicating a large Romanian component in Hunyadi's personal army. In the morning of November 10, Hunyadi deployed the army of some 20,000 crusaders as an arc between Lake Varna and the Franga Plateau. The line was about 3.5 kilometers long. Two banners with a total of 3,500 men from the king's Polish and Hungarian bodyguards, Hungarian royal mercenaries, and banners of Hungarian nobles held the center. The Wallachian cavalry was left in reserve behind the center. The right flank that lined up the hill towards the village of Kaminar numbered 6,500 men in five banners. Dalmatian John de Dominis, Bishop of Varadin with his personal banner led the force. Cesarini commanded a banner of German mercenaries and a Bosnian one. The Bishop of Iga Simon Rogonii led his own banner, and the military governor of Slavonian, Ban Franco Talavac, commanded one Croatian banner. The left flank, a total of 5,000 men in five banners, was led by Michael Silagy, Hunyadi's brother-in-law, and was made up of Hunyadi's Transylvanians, Bulgarians, German mercenaries, and banners of Hungarian magnates. Behind the Hungarians, closer to the Black Sea and the lake, was the Wagenburg, defended by 300 or 600 Czech and Ruthenian mercenaries under Hetman Seika, along with Poles, Lithuanians, and Wallachians. Every wagon was crewed with 7 to 10 soldiers, and the Wagenburg was equipped with bombards. The Ottoman center included the Janissaries and levies from Rumelia deployed around two Thracian burial mounds. Murad observed and directed the battle from one of them. The Janissaries dug in behind ditches and two palisades. The right wing consisted of Capiculus and Sipahis from Rumelia, and the left wing was made up by Akinchis, Sipahis from Anatrulia, and other forces. Janissary archers and Akinchi light cavalry were deployed on the Franga Plateau. The light Ottoman cavalry assaulted the Croats of Banfranco Tolozzi. Christians from the left reposted with bombards and firearms and stopped the attack. Christian soldiers chased the Ottomans in a disorderly pursuit. The Anatholian cavalry ambushed them from the flank. The Christian right wing attempted to flee to the small fortress of Galata on the other side of Varna Bay, but most of them were slain in the marshland around Varna Lake and the river Devnia, where Cesarini also met his end. Only Ban Talotz's troops managed to withdraw behind the Wagenburg. The other Ottoman flank assaulted the Hungarians and Bulgarians of Michael Siagi. Their push was stopped and turned back. Then Sipahis attacked again, Hunyuri decided to help and advised Wladyslaw to wait until he returned, then advanced with two cavalry companies. The young king, ignoring Hunyuri's advice, rushed 500 of his Polish knights against the Ottoman center. They attempted to overrun the Janissary infantry and take Murad prisoner, and almost succeeded. But in front of Murad's tent, Wladyslaw's horse either fell into a trap or was stabbed, and the king was beheaded by mercenary Koja Haza. The remaining coalition cavalry were demoralized and defeated by the Ottomans. On his return, Hunyadi tried frantically to salvage the king's body, but all he could accomplish was to organize the retreat of the remains of his army. It suffered thousands of casualties in the chaos and was virtually annihilated. Neither the head nor body of the king were ever found. The minnesinger Michael Behem wrote a song based on the story of Hans Mergist, who spent 16 years in Ottoman captivity after the battle. The death of Ladislaw left Hungary in the hands of the four-year-old Ladislaus Posthumus of Bohemia and Hungary. He was succeeded in Poland by Casimir IV Jajalon after a three-year interregnum. Murad's casualties at Varna were so heavy, it was not until three days later that he realized he was victorious. Nevertheless, the Ottoman victory in Varna, followed by the Ottoman victory in the Second Battle of Kosovo in 1448, deterred the European states from sending any substantial military assistance to the Byzantines during the Ottoman siege of Constantinople in 1453. 